uh, 108, that uh, of course is another, what I mentioned in your introduction. Um, the, are there any other such numbers which are, uh, or 108 is also, I mean, if you add them up, it's nine and nine is also like a very sacred number in, in our, um, in our belief systems in our uh, faith. So uh, are there any such, I mean, is there any, what is the connection between, are they connected mathematics, astronomy, and religious principles, not principles, I don't want to call them principles, but beliefs. And uh, like you said, the temple, for example, was supposed to be reflective of the, of the cosmos. Uh, they say the body is also, the body is a kshetra is also a re representative. So do you think you could probably, and I know that this would be oversimplification, but could you probably bring that concept? Uh, would you be able to throw some light on that concept? Of numbers. Oh, yeah. and <laughs> yes, uh, lots of numbers. In fact, uh, about 30 years ago, it, actually, I think it was November of 1992, I was reading uh, a magazine um, where this uh, American author had uh, mentioned how it's curious that uh, the size of the sun and the moon, looking at them from the earth is about the same, which is why you have eclipses. And the mm. moment I read that, something mm. flashed in my mind, mm. and I was certain that it had something to do with the very organization of the Rig Veda. Mm. So I went to my library and I opened up my Rig Veda and I looked at the very uh, contents and so on. It so turns out that the Rig Veda has a total of 1,017 hymns uh, or suktas. And 1,017, you know, the Veda is supposed to be Trai Vidya. Mm -hmm. Three, because uh, there are three way, uh, three ways in which we can look at reality. There is the subject and object and motion, or mm -hmm. looking at it from the perspective of objects. You have Earth, um, uh, the atmosphere, and the sun or the heavens. Three mm -hmm. with you, or Bhu, Bhuva, Swaha. Bhu is the Earth. Bhuva is the atmosphere and Swaha, Swar means the sun. Mm -hmm. So you have the three. So uh, if, if you take 1017 and divide it by three, you get 339. Mm -hmm. Now what's beautiful is that 339 is 108 times pi. If the sun is 108, it's diameter away from you, from mm -hmm. sunrise to sunset mm -hmm. on 21st of March or 21st of September, which is when the, this, the day and the night are equal, mm -hmm. you will have 339 disks of the sun from mm -hmm. sunrise to sunset. So we see that this number is coded uh, right in the very organization of the Rig Veda. Not just the Rig Veda, if you look at all the Vedas and look at all the mantras in them, they mm -hmm. also are related to these fundamental astronomical numbers. Mm -hmm. And um, I then um, I published a lot of stuff on that in Western and Indian journals in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. Then I wrote a book called The Astronomical Code of the Rig Veda, where you'll find all these details. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, um, when we have 108 beats in the Japamala, basically what you're doing is making a symbolic journey from the earth to the sun, which is your inner lamp of consciousness, mm -hmm. the divinity. Shiva or Krishna or the goddess, whatever you want to visualize as the lamp of con consciousness. So you're making that journey, symbolic journey. Or in Ayurveda, mm -hmm. uh, because as you rightly pointed out, the body itself mirrors the cosmos, right? Mm -hmm. So if you take 108 things and join them, uh, how many meeting points will you have? you'll have 107, right? If you take two things and put them together, you'll have one joining. If you Sorry. take 108 things, you'll have 107 joinings. So in Ayurveda, the number of marmas, mm. marmasthans is 107. Mm. And this illuminates that. This tells you why it's 107. So these numbers permeate everything. You also have 100, 108 great temples or Tirtha Sans, right? And, and, and so this number was out there, but mm. its true astronomical significance had been sort of forgotten for mm. a couple of thousand years. 
Mm -hmm. and and so now it's all out there and we can make a sense make sense of a lot of stuff in our um parampara in our tradition mm -hmm. in what we do in light of this mm -hmm. and uh, likewise uh, 108 names of the god or the goddess right. so you are invoking or making that journey within you right because normally we are on earth which is our body Mm -hmm. And from there, we want to go inside mm -hmm. to the light, Prakash. You know, in fact, in uh, Shaivism, Shiva is also called Prakash. And Prakriti is also called Vimash. Because the Prakash falls on the brain neural system, which is the heart of Prakriti as far as our body is concerned. You know, looking at it from a neuroscientific perspective. And uh, the whole... Uh, sadhana then is supposed to be a process by which since normally you're only looking at the lighting within the mind right the mind mm. is a instrument mm. uh, associated with our ego ahankar and our memories mm. uh, so it's an instrument and the light is falling on it but how do we turn uh, that light around and mm. we light ourselves so that we become the shiva that we are, Shivoham, right? Mm -hmm. And all of us, every human being is the same. You know, this is the most extraordinary way under, of understanding reality, which uh, we have also discovered now mm -hmm. uh, is consistent with the most advanced scientific knowledge. And, and, and so now it, the, that parallel with scientific knowledge right now has been understood um, in the domain of say physics, but now people are also recognizing that this is what will open further doorways of understanding in psychology itself, because psychology has been more um, a kind of a machine paradigm, right? You have in, uh, input and then output, you have uh, stimulus and then you have response and the individual has been taken out of it. And in fact, this is a crisis of psychology. Where is the individual? Where is freedom? Because, and this is also a crisis of medicine. Because in medicine, uh, allopathic medicine, there's no room for the mind. Mm. You're only uh, dealing with the body. body. And, and, and what's happening right now is that 60, 70, 80% of medical research cannot be replicated. This is called the... Uh, reproducibility crisis of modern medicine mm -hmm. and and probably and there's also the placebo effect 30 to 40 percent of the people if they are given sugar pills and told that they're giving they're being given a medicine they'll get well mm -hmm. and um, placebo effect even works in surgery if mm -hmm. uh, the patient is told that surgery is being performed and the doctor just makes an incision and does nothing and then mm -hmm. closes the incision the patient gets well also 30 to 40 percent really? interesting yeah, yeah this is incredible and this is the frontier of medicine right now but part of the problem is that modern medicine has no room for the mind the mind and that is the very heart of um, indian approach to reality indian approach embraces both the body both the outside as well as the inside mm. and that's what's required for sciences as well and mm. that's that's the reason why you know a lot of um, thoughtful people are saying that the next fundamental change that will take place in the sciences would be informed by mm. all these uh, vedic ideas please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel for our other social media links more content and to support our work please visit CITTI.net Dhanyavad Namaskar